Hey everyone, welcome back to another Adobe XD plus protopie tutorial. Today we'll be creating this awesome motion gesture animation that will make in an XD and protopie look cool. It's it's timed animation. There's a slight delay, which makes it look a little more uh, impactful. So without further ado, let's just get started with this tutorial. I have recently joined Instagram. So if you haven't followed me there yet, I will be posting a lot of stuff every day there. I also do stories and live uh, interviews on my Instagram. So go ahead and check my Instagram out today. Okay, so to begin with, we will start with an iPhone 10 or 10s layout if we just go into Adobe XD. Now here we want to have a blob and I'll just showcase the resources that I use to make those blobs. Now this super handy website called blobmaker.app allows you to create uh, these complex blob shapes right here. You can adjust the contrast and increase the complexity or decrease the complexity as you like. I'm happy with a shape like this, so I'll go ahead and download it from here. It basically downloads an SVG. So anything that you import into XD as an SVG, you can edit later on. I've laid it down pretty well. Now I want that new morphic depth effect that I had created with my original design. So what I will do is first of all, I'll make this white and maybe give this 50% uh, opacity. You know what, 45 is better. Go ahead and click on the pen tool and I will just drag the pen, uh, the pen tool around this blob here. So now I'll click on this path and I'll press enter to reveal these little circles which are anchor points. If I double click on them, you'll be able to adjust these anchor points to fit in this much better. And you can just hold on option or alt and that will help you adjust each individual handle just like that. What I'll do is I'll increase the border size from one to about 12, that should do. And I will also change the color from this to a darker blue shade of this. So I'll just drag it around to make it slightly darker blue, very similar to this, awesome. Uh, and right here in Adobe XD, I have this background blur option. I'll click on that and I'll click on this little arrow next to it. And now as you can see, it's created this background blur. I'll reduce the background blur. And what I'll now do is just, um, you know, change the opacity from 100 to, I'll bring it down to 45, looking good. And what I will do is just spin it around, just hold shift and spin it around like this. Now adjust it according to the edges at the bottom here. I'll just change the color of this bottom border to from this dark blue to white. Absolutely correct, looking good. Now what I'll do is I will basically duplicate this uh, blob in the background by saying Command D, or Control D, and make sure that it's above all these shadows and everything else. And if I go to the layers panel, I can then select this blob and the two parts at the bottom, which are the shadows. I'll say that and I'll select everything and I'll say Command Shift M or Control Shift M. As you can see, now it's gotten that depth effect. I can reduce the opacity just like this if I wanted to adjust the opacity a little bit. Now we have this really nice new morphic depth uh, inner shadow effect. Now we need to place that jewel. Where did I get that jewel from? It is from this beautiful free 3D project created by Anna D. She's made these amazing paint uh, like 3D shapes which look really good and they're kind of stretched out so they give that good uh, depth effect as well. What I'll do is I'll make another blob, adjust it right here uh, and make something like this. So it looks more like a little stone or a jewel like that. Now what I'll do is just drag a, one of these illustration images, they're PNG, so they're pretty cool. And I'll just drag them right into the shape. Once you drag them right into the shape, I'll just double click the shape and then I will adjust the image which has been placed inside it so that it covers the entirety of the shape. You really can't see any of these uh, edges, you know, blowing out of proportion. If you've followed some of these instructions, you'll easily be able to create these jewels. You'll be able to edit their shadow with this light pink and dark blue right here. So multiple shadows in the background. And I've also placed these really cool looking, very simple cards here to give the information for this. Now let's move on to Protopie. Under this, click on File, click on Export, and under Export, you'll have an option called Protopie if you have Protopie installed. Click on this, and you will be greeted with a certain screen. 
You will then be greeted by a screen like this. Under import size, I want you to select at 3x. And under re-import options, make sure that all three of these top boxes are selected. Then I'll click on import and you'll have something that looks like this. If you have any problems importing both of these, which I had, of course, make sure that you make sure that you go back to XD and in XD, you can always delete the second screen and then import this individual screen itself. Once you have all this set up, go to add trigger and under add trigger, I will click on tilt. Uh, tilt is basically it will detect if the phone is tilting or not. And under this, I want to say move. Now we want to move a certain trigger here. I'll go ahead and create a quick trigger by clicking R on the keyboard. It will basically create a rectangle and I'll rename the rectangle to trigger so that we remember. And this trigger should be 0% in opacity. I'll set it from the right here. Under this, I have this move option now. So once the trigger has been set under move, click on select layer and say trigger. Awesome. Uh, under this, as you can see, there is a certain range. So we will change the range from minus 30 to minus 45. And the second value at the bottom should be minus 80 or something greater than that. Uh, here under this, we want it to move minus 10 on the X axis and we can keep it zero on the Y. Uh, same here, I'll just put in the same values on both on top as well as at the bottom. Uh, again, I'll click on plus and I'll say move. And basically in this case, I want it to move to the right. So when we jerk the phone or move the phone to the right, it will move to the right. So plus 30 in this case, uh, and maybe 80 plus 80 in this case. And I want it to move 10 to the right and 10 to the right as well on both cases, looking good. Now everything is set up. We will then add another cool trigger. Inside this trigger, I will click on detect and detect will basically allow us to detect the tilt. And in this case, I will click on select and I want the trigger. So whenever the trigger moves, our animation will happen. So in this case, I will click on plus and I will go to the bottom and say condition. Condition is very simple. It's like an if condition. Uh, if something happens, something, something should be assigned. So in this case, if the trigger moves on the X axis uh, less than equal to minus 10, then certain animation should take place. Looking good. I'll click on plus and I'll say move. Now we will move this group. And in this case, we can just go to move and say move by rather than say move to. In this case, I can just shift it to minus 450. This means it will shift to the left by minus 450 pixels. And I'll change it to ease and out cubic. I might set it to quad and duration should be something longer. So 0.8 should be good. Start delay should be 0.1. So there's a slight delay when you're uh, jerking your phone. I will basically click on move and say command D or control D. It's a shortcut to duplicate any animation or trigger. If I click on move, uh, I will then move these cards individually. So group nine is there. So I'll probably move group nine rather than moving group. Maybe I'll move this minus uh, I don't know, 500 or something like that. But you're smart, you guys are smart enough to understand now that we will move all these to the left by adding values to this move. Uh, you can quickly just say command D to duplicate these. And also for these elements, what I did was just select uh, the original group here, group three, see what position their X and Y axis is on. And basically on this move, what I did was just select the name here which is group three for the second jewel, group three copy and move two rather than move by and just select uh, or just copy the values right here, 144.91, something like that. And ease in out, same values, but change their duration to about one second and start delay to 0 0.2. So it moves in after this jewel has moved to the left. Same goes for these cards. We'll uh, set the same value for duration and start delay and move it to the same position as the first cards, which are right here. So just check the X and Y axis and put it right there. I will then add another trigger for the right jerk as well. We can quickly just click on this trigger, which is detect and say command D or control D to duplicate this detect option. 
under condition i will change it to greater than or equal to 10 so now when we are shifting to the right certain values will change in this case i will move this by plus 400 so when this has arrived here this goes minus 400 under this i'll bring it back to plus 450 or just 450 uh, same goes for same goes for these cards i'll just move it by the same amount to the right 500 rather than minus 500 if you're using this technique of course if you've done everything right you should have something cool like this you can experiment with protopi make your own animations and try it out on yourself i hope you liked that video go ahead and subscribe to the channel i post videos every monday and thursday i also have a podcast now check that out design uncut no cuts no edit no bullshit i'll see you in the next video god bless